All right, coming up on this episode of Sound Culture, we're gonna be going over the emotionally powerful and gravitational pulling album that is Post Traumatic by Mike Shinoda of Linkin Park fame. You're gonna wanna watch this one, it's very powerful. <laughs> All right, we're back for another episode of Sound Culture, the show where we give you recommendations about albums you should be listening to. Today, I'm going to be giving you a highly, highly anticipated recommendation on my part. And the reason for this is that we're talking about Post Traumatic, the 2018 follow-up album. And when I mean follow-up, I mean follow-up to the aftermath and sadness that was uh, the loss of Chester Bennington, the front man, co-frontman really of Linkin Park. Uh, as some of you know, maybe not everyone does, but I'll, I'll share this little, uh, information. In July of 2017, Chester Bennington uh, committed suicide and effectively uh, disrupted Linkin Park as a band. Uh, Mike Chino was the other co-lead uh, of this band and he's been left in the wake of that. Post traumatic is his way of dealing with his feelings about the death of his friend, and it is a very raw and real album. I didn't know how I was going to feel about it when I bought it initially, but I knew that I wanted to listen to it, and I'm really glad I did. Uh, I've I've seen uh, reviews about this album, and I've I've read reviews about this album, and it's been kind of rating around a 73% on Metacritic, but I actually think it's a lot stronger album than that. And so um, I will say, don't expect to go into this without having some raw emotions attached to it because he does talk about the fact that, you know, when you experience a loss, you, you re, re, re-feel those things over and over again. And that's one of the first songs on the album. Uh, one of the singles, in fact. You also have Crossing a Line, and you have Nothing um, Makes Sense Anymore, and um, Place to Start, which was actually a song off their off of Linkin Park's last album that didn't quite make the cut. Um, one More Night, I don't know if you... Or sorry, One More Light, rather. So, uh, A Place to Start came off of... the. It was a... Uh, a track that didn't make it its way onto the last cut of One More Light. And and then, of course, you have Watching As I Fall. All like Just from those titles of the songs alone, you can recognize pretty quickly that this is an album about healing, about addressing things, about levity in the face of death, and also about the seriousness that comes with facing death. And when I say facing death, I don't mean as someone who actually has gone through a life altering event um, where they experienced death firsthand and came out of it the other hand. I mean the impact that death has on people who are close to someone who dies. Um, Shinoda actually said of the album that he, he created it as a way to deal with his feelings and some days he has good days and some days he has bad days, but he was making a lot of really bad music when he first came out of the loss of Chester. Like he was making bad grunge songs and bad rap songs, but then he started making really powerful songs. And so he decided to embrace this solo album and just run with it. And thankfully he did because this is probably one of the best albums of 27 or 2018. Uh, I think anyway. Um, that said, I think you should also learn a little bit about Shinoda's background. So, as you know, he was a frontman for uh, Linkin Park for many years, and we don't know what's happening with Linkin Park going forward, but they made seven albums. Uh, some of my favorites are Hybrid Theory and Meteora, but these guys have done some really excellent stuff. Shinoda is a hip-hop artist. He also dabbles in rock, and he... Uh, I heard this really interesting comparison to him, um, to Eminem, but with a little bit more um, empathy and a little bit more weight to his lyrics. I don't. Know, it's almost like uh, he's not emphatic, but he is an empathetic character, if that makes sense. He also has his own label. It's called Machine Shop that he runs with uh, Brad Delson of Linkin Park. Warner Brothers, of course, is the main label that picked this up and they uh, have been known to carry artists like Gorillaz and Green Day and Red Hot Chili Peppers and Black Keys. So, 
uh, you know, Shinoda is in good standing with this, uh, this label. And if you're wondering who some of his personal influencers are, if you don't know Linkin Park, Nine Inch Nails, hands down his favorite, one of his favorite bands along with uh, Creedence Clearwater Revival, but I don't see the correlation as much with them. So Nine Inch Nails, listen to Nine Inch Nails if you want to listen to Mike Shinoda and know what he sounds like and what he does. He also uh, is related to um, Trent Reznor, obviously, because, or he's similar to Trent Reznor, sorry, in the sense that Trent Reznor is the head for Nine Inch Nails. Uh, Macklemore, uh, another great artist to listen to if you want to hear what he sounds like, or Machine Gun Kelly and Eminem, obviously, I mentioned already. Um, another thing I want to mention about this album, uh, Mike Shinoda has said about it, is that it's been a personal journey for him in the sense that it's something of grief and darkness, but it's also a way for him to go through something and come out the other side stronger. And it's... Uh, he wants people who have felt those things before to feel like they're not alone. And if you haven't felt those things and been through those traumatic events, he wants you to feel grateful, which I think is really powerful as well. One other thing I didn't mention yet, which I thought was super cool. Mike Shinoda was a major contributor in the score of the movie Raid the Redemption. So the American soundtrack for, or score rather, for the movie Raid Redemption, which is an amazing action movie. And he's a graphic designer. He actually made the painting that features on the front of this um, cover. He, he makes tons of art. So he's not only a, a musician and a lyricist, he's also a visual artist. That said, um, I could talk about this album for quite a bit longer, but I don't want to go into too much detail. I really do think you need to experience this directly firsthand. It's a powerful album. It is meaningful, and there's a lot to be said about it. So please leave this uh, video a like if you liked what I had to say. Comments if you've listened to Post Traumatic yet, and I want to know what you think of it. And share the album review, because I think a lot of people don't know about this gem for 2018 and it's it's a powerful album that said subscribe if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet your support means the world to me it allows me to make more and more of these videos album reviews of course movie reviews board game reviews i have my friends and uh, uh colleagues on this channel all the time i do professional interviews with creatives and lastly um, I also do a discussion panel where we talk about the arts and popular culture and why it's important to support the arts. So that said, thanks for watching Sound Culture. I hope you enjoyed the video again, of course, and we'll catch you next time. It's weird how that works, eh? Like you go through some sort of like shocking, revelatory experience that hurts. And then you can actually make painful music and have it mean something. And not to say the Lincoln Park couldn't make painful music that meant something before, but I mean the fact that Chester Bennington committed suicide and died, he left a birth of people wondering what it all means. And having his best friend and uh, like co-writer and co-creator of Lincoln Park here, he's he's actually making something meaningful and healing out of it, and healing Linkin Park fans. And I will be the first to admit that I kind of stopped listening to Linkin Park after Meteora came out. But this, this is powerful stuff.